What do you think some of the things Americans take for granted that are not demonstrated in other countries? Gosh, uh, everything. Um, we complain about health care. Um, we complain about, um, I think, freedom chiefly. Most your age have no idea what the lack of freedom looks like. Exactly. And um, to experience that even modestly would change their perspective. And that, that again, really is why I wrote the book, because I want to say uh, to all Americans, but particularly to younger ones, let me tell you what the rest of the world is like. Yeah. Let me tell you what you risk losing, and you can never get it back mm, no. once so you've lost true. it. So I know that you were talking about some of the things that make a great country. You were talking about the freedoms, right? Political, economic, and religious, a nation's history, you know, a social mobility, the life of ordinary people, Yeah. which I thought is really important. So what happens to a country whenever you take those things away? What are they living like? What does their life look like? Well, it's interesting. The other day, I was with some guys on a, on a back porch, and one of them was a guy that I don't know. And, um, but the other one I did know, he's from Bolivia. The, the uh, American businessman, a captain of industry, you know, has done very well for himself. But he was asking me what I predict is coming next. Yeah. Um, you know, now that Biden has taken office. And I said, yeah. well, and I started to lay out a fairly dark narrative. And I could see his face begin to change as though he's thinking, okay, I have a real conspiracy theorist here. Mm -hmm. And seeing that, I said, I can tell you don't really believe me, but let's ask J.A. because he's grown up in Bolivia. And he basically said, yep, yep, everything he just wow. said is true. Yeah. Now, why would he say that? Because J.A. knows that this is the way the world works. Mm. In, in other words, in some ways, it's charming. Most Americans are quite naive. Yeah, yeah. We're incredibly naive. We're known around the world to be naive. Mm -hmm. Wow. And for the rest of the world, it's laughable to think that the idea that an election could be rigged is a conspiracy theory <laughs> is silly because yeah. they know that they're they rigged that all, way. The it happens time. Yeah. all the time. All the time. This exactly. is the global norm. <laughs> yes. yeah. yeah. So, uh, th you know, these are things that Americans don't understand. Mm. Okay, yeah. but something that's interesting is we used to talk about all these progressive ideas in the Democrat Party. We were talking about how we want them to say those crazy things because they're so crazy, no one would ever actually vote for that. Yeah. But over time, you see this progressive mm -hmm. agenda completely transforming what the Democrat Party even is. How does ideas like that take root in our country? With children. Yeah. Um, years ago, I was in education and um, mm. seeing what was happening in our universities, in our better schools, um, this, I've been screaming this for decades. Um, you are paying for your children to be radicalized. Yes. You know, Joni and I were talking uh, um, earlier with Marcus, and I mentioned a young man with whom I recently met to, um, who's declared himself an atheist. Now, mm -hmm. his parents are thinking, we're Christian, conservative, evangelicals. We love Jesus. How is it that our son yeah. holds a worldview that is different than ours? I want to say it's very simple. He spends eight hours a day, at yes. least, yep. outside yep. Of, of your care. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. and influence. You are paying for him to be radicalized. Mm -hmm. he, his mind is being poisoned against you. Who do you think fills the ranks of Antifa and Black Lives Matter yes. and so on? It is mm -hmm. the young, as with every revolution in history. It is the young mm -hmm. who are used as the vanguard to destroy things and then are themselves soon cast aside. But that's where we find ourselves. A so, lot of people don't know that you know, Black Lives Matter and Antifa and these organizations are associated with Marxism and stuff. Can you explain that to our viewers who don't know? Go to um, our YouTube page, the Fixed Point Foundation YouTube page. It's still there after this show. But uh, go there <laughs> wow. and you can just Google um, a, uh, excuse me, you can, don't Google. You, yeah. can, uh, you can search their um, understanding socialism and Marxism. Understanding socialism and Marxism. It's a very short wow. little video that I did with lots of nifty graphics that explains the connection mm. between Black Lives Matter, um, Marxism, and the Democrat Party. But I would simply say this, that, that Marxism is a, a strain of socialism. And it is, by definition, God-less, as Marx was. It is about the acquisition of power at all costs. They have no respect um, for uh, uh, democratic processes at all, none. 
And, um, and so they're about the acquisition of power. And yes, you are absolutely correct. Black Lives Matter founders have stated quite openly, we are Marxists. Yeah. And uh, people need to understand that that worldview is not um, about freedom. Although we do believe that black lives matter. We're talking yeah. about the or association, the right. or organization, organization, and some of that. We, we've talked about that before. Quickly tell us, because we only have a little bit of time left, where are we going and what happened when this administration came into power on the first day? Well, um, they have meant what they've been saying all along. Um, theirs is a very radical, godless agenda. Yeah. But I don't want our listeners um, to come away, well, um, I've just been beaten to a pulp, you know, and hearing all the depressing news. Mm -hmm. um, God still sits on his throne. Yes. And I don't mean that in a trite way. No. That's, that's very real. Uh, he is sovereign. We might be surprised by some of these things. He is not. Mm -hmm. um, and again, evangelicals, conservatively speaking, in the United States alone, see, in Europe, I would have very little hope. In Britain, in continental yeah. Europe, evangelicals are less than 3% of the population. I would say in France, probably less than 1% of the population. In America, they're 26%. Now, that's one in four. So to go back to your, your uh, favorite phrase, you know, we're seeing a situation of the tail wagging the dog. But Christians are going to need to become more organized, um, and they're going yeah. to have to be resolved to do something Passionate. about yeah. this. And so what was one of the first things signed, an executive order? We were talking about it earlier. Uh, yes. Uh, well, one of the things that he did is transgender athletes now can participate in female sports. So that's the end of female sports. Yeah. Mm. You know, I can fair. declare myself a woman and, you know, yeah. and, and do whatever. Another thing is the expansion of abortion. With your tax dollars, they are killing kids. Yes, and funding it abroad yeah, and funding what? transgender nonsense abroad. So this is who they are. This is what they're about. Mm, they're yeah. not about protecting uh, your constitutional rights. They're about pushing a radical leftist agenda.